On behalf of ESB in general and ESB Telecoms in particular, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody here today. As you can see, this is uh, an event uh, that we're using, I suppose, to, to show the kind of innovation that's happening across ESB. And ESB has been kind of innovating for a long time. This isn't anything that's new to us. So since the foundation of the state, I suppose, back in the 1920s, uh, we started by diverting the River Shannon uh, down in Limerick, building a hydropower station in Ardner Croatia. So we were into the sustainability, I suppose, and in innovation from a very early stage. And we kept that theme running right through with rural electrification in, in the 50s and 60s, with building thermal power stations through the 70s, uh, the pump storage station in Turlock Hill, uh, and on and on then through network renewal and getting into smart grids and more and more renewable energy. So we've been doing a lot of innovation for a long time, and we've moved into kind of adjacent industries, as is clear from the, the, the audience here today, in telecoms as well. So despite the fact there's been a lot of, I suppose, innovation and change in the electricity industry over a long period of time, the actual basic kind of model of the industry hasn't really changed until quite recently, and it's really changing quickly now. So I'd like to just maybe bring people through some of the trends that we're seeing in the energy industry, but these trends actually kind of apply to other adjacent industries, industries like IT and telecoms and even home entertainment. So we're gonna look maybe at, at what the trends are, what they mean for the customer and the customer of the future, what they mean for ESB and what we're doing about it and who we're doing it with, because a, a big focus for us at the moment really is collaboration both internally and externally. So maybe just start and look at some of, some of the trends. And one of the trends we see is the scale. Uh, in the past, we used to build really big things that took a long time to build and lasted a long, long time, 40, 50 years. And you were looking at investments in the orders of millions up to a billion euro. That's much kind of less what's happening now. And we're moving to it's a lot of smaller scale, micro wind, uh, solar panels, you can see some outside there, just on the back of that panel behind you, you know, you can pick it up in your hand. So investments, because of that, have gone down, you know, so you're talking thousands and hundreds of thousands rather than millions and billions in terms of the power industry. Big change. Also the design of the industry, if you like, if you look at networks, in the old traditional design was a centralized power station through transmission and distribution lines and out to the customer. Much more now, we have a distributed grid, we have, uh, we have new renewable technologies feeding in even on the distribution system and going out to the user. So there's still some big centralized generation, but less than we needed before, and we're seeing more and more storage, renewables, and smaller scale. So as carbon intensity is a huge driver as well. In the past, we used an awful lot of fossil fuels, but between EU legislation, between just awareness of the environment, there's a big drive towards lower carbon emissions. And that has led to lots of new technologies like wind and wave, generally driven by low carbon, driven by an engaged and active customer who wants actually clean energy. Big, big changes for an industry like ours. And then the rate of change has really accelerated. You know, things were slow, took a long time to do in the past. It's very, very rapid now. And on the customer side, our customers have gone from being very passive, who would just take the electricity that comes into them, use it to boil a kettle, watch TV or whatever, not be conscious of what they were using, when they were using, or the price really, until they got a bill two months after the event. Customers now are much more active, much more engaged, want to control their energy, want to pay in advance if they want to, pay as you go if they want to. So they have a lot of, totally different, I suppose, relationship now between our traditional relationship with our customer, which was very light touch. We'd, we'd connect them when they moved into a new house. You'd call out if they had a power cut. You'd send them a bill every second month. That was the only engagement. Now it's digital. It's much more, uh, much more pervasive. So it's a big change. Uh, in terms of assets in the industry, and this is very much the same in the telecoms industry as well. You can be in the business without owning any assets, which just once you have access to assets. So you can sell fiber without having, you can sell broadband without having fiber, you can sell electricity without having a power station. And because of that, barriers to entry in the industry have really dropped. So it's very easy, cheap to get into this industry. And on the customer side, in the past, our customers were consumers. They took the power coming down these big power lines and used it. Now they can produce their own electricity or some of their own electricity. They can 
store their own electricity on site, they can actually sell their own electricity back into the grid so they can trade it as well. And with all of that, actually what we've seen over the last number of years, there's actually been a decline. From the start of the state, there was always a growth in electricity every year, and it absolutely tracked GDP all the time until the recession a number of years ago, and then they decoupled. And now that the, the economy is starting to lift again, those two things have not recoupled. So people in the recession got used to using a bit less electricity. They were also more environmentally aware. They started using low energy light bulbs. We have low energy appliances, you know, low energy washing machines. Uh, and building regulations are driving better insulation and uh, more energy efficient buildings. So all of that has, has resulted in, in a decline in the demand for electricity over the last number of years. And while it's starting to come up a little bit now, it's not coming up at the same rate as it did, and it's not tracking the economy the way it did before. In the past as well, generation and supply was a regulated market, and then since the 90s, which drove a lot of change in this industry, we moved to competition. So there are a lot of other players in the market now. And I suppose that competition has changed the nature of things as well. You know, in the old days, it was big fish used to eat the little fish. Now the little fish are nibbling away at the big fish, and it's a, it's a very different place to be. Again, from the telecom side, you'll be much more familiar with this, the idea of offerings being single to being bundled. Uh, so you get your broadband and your TV, you buy electricity and gas. There's bundling of offers now, again, another change. And even the way people work, I suppose in the past, bigger utilities, bigger companies used to do everything themselves. Certainly that was the case with us. Now it's much more around collaboration. I think you can see outside here uh, the areas where we're collaborating with people and looking to collaborate more in the future. So what does all, they're all the kind of the trends that we're seeing. What does that mean for, for the customer? Well, if you take Energy 1.0, if you like, as a model, um, the customer had a mechanical meter in their house, so it just clocked up when they were using kilowatt hours. Didn't, people didn't know when they were using them or where they were coming from. And you had big power stations and the old centralized grid. So that was the way the supply side was. And then on the demand side, where the customer was, they used electricity, they got the bill, and power flowed in one direction from the grid to the user. So what's Energy 2.0 look like? Well, it's quite different, and as I say, again, driven by some of those trends I was talking about. So th the meter now will be a smart meter. So the smart meter will let you know the price of electricity when you're using it. It can even let you know what type of device you're using it on. It'll let you know the carbon intensity of that electricity. And as time moves on, there'll be time of use tariffs, so you'll pay different amount of it for the different times of day that you use your electricity. So big change even in the the interaction between the supply and the demand side. The supply side will have changed a lot. As we said, there's lots more distributed generation. There's a lot of new uh, disruptive technologies and energy storage, battery storage, grid scale battery storage, which is something we're going to demonstrate in the next year or so with Mitsubishi from Japan. We're going to bring large uh, megawatt scale batteries onto the system. And then on the customer side or the demand side, probably even more changes. And the customer has the opportunity to use an electric car, for example, which has a battery in it, so that can kind of store electricity. We'll be able to feed both ways. We have um, solar, micro solar on the roof of a house, micro wind, and all of these interactive devices. So customers can control their energy usage from their mobile phone. You can see a number of demonstrations back here with uh, Honeywell and, and Nest and, and Cylon. So um, big, big changes. I suppose, on both sides. And when you, I suppose one of the biggest changes then is that now you don't just have power traveling one way, you have power can travel both ways, but also information and telecommunications, both directions. Big, big changes. And then when you start to try and control all of these things and link them together, because most of these devices have chips in them, this is moving you towards the internet of things, and energy is very much at the heart of that. So what's ESB doing about all of this? Uh, we're doing quite a lot, and outside here, I suppose, the, the idea of this demonstration really is to show people maybe what we're doing in these different areas. And I go through some of these, like we're looking at the new technologies. Uh, we're looking at wind, wave, hydro, solar. This is a particular kind of a new area we're looking at, which is decarbonization of heat. So using electricity, decarbonized electricity, use that for heating and cooling. 
allows you to stop using fossil fuels for heating and cooling. And that will have a big effect on the uh, emissions for the country as well and really help Ireland to eat it, meet its emissions targets. So I suppose all of these areas, including fiber and telecoms, and obviously I won't st steal Jerry's thunder now. Jerry will talk to you about that, that business later on. But I suppose this is just giving you a, maybe a general background to all of the areas and how, how they interlink. One of the things we do, I suppose, in all these areas is we, we have uh, an investment fund, a VC fund, a 200 million fund we call Novus Modus. It's operated by Green Coat Capital from London for us. So they go out and look at new technologies, new startup companies in the clean green space. And we invest in these companies so that we can get early sight of the technologies and that we can learn around it, about the technology. We can maybe help these companies in terms of developing. And we share information both ways. So some of the things we've invested in are building management systems, geothermal, ground source, um, waste heat recovery systems, um, wind farms, solar, low energy lighting. They're just a number of the, of the technologies that we've invested in over the last number of years. So it, it works really well from a, a technology transfer point of view. Also in terms of startups, we're, we sponsor Spark of Genius in association with the Web Summit, and we've done that for the last few years, and we're announcing here that we, we'll continue that sponsorship. And in terms of collaborations, we work with lots of different groups. We work with government agencies, we work with international agencies, um, industry associations, private companies, technology companies. So I've mentioned some of the things maybe to date that we've done. Uh, for example, with Kingspan, we've recently uh, done a JV where we're launching a funded solar offering so that uh, solar panels can be put particularly on, on uh, industrial and commercial businesses and people can save as they pay so that they think it's funded up front uh, so there's lo low capital investment for, in for, for the firms. We've also, with the Green Investment Bank in the UK, we're, uh, we're just starting to build a 40 megawatt waste heat recovery, or not waste heat, with biomass uh, plant that will burn waste wood and uh, situated in London. Uh, we've done work with the World Bank all around the world as well with ESB International. And just uh, as I mentioned, ESB International, we've, we've uh, a number of big contracts, I suppose, at the moment. We've uh, recently announced there's a 12 million euro contract in Ghana. Uh, next week, we're, we're to sign um, a 17 million euro contract in Saudi to do the engineering on a concentrated solar collector. Actually, I was doing an interview on the radio yesterday, and they said, what is somebody from Ireland doing going to help somebody in Saudi with solar energy? But we have a lot of engineers who have been working in the Middle East for a long, long time now. So I mean, we're familiar with these guys. We have long-term relationships with them, and uh, we managed to, to win the contract there. And we have a big contract pending now in Botswana. We're in negotiations with the government in Botswana uh, to actually take over the running of the entire power system down there and put in the top seven executives, including chief executive, and that's what we're... We're hoping for good news on that in the next week or two. And I suppose in terms of all of those things that we do, I suppose they're really driven by our people and driven by kind of the ingenuity and, and the innovation that our people show. So we're actually going to launch a, an innovation incubator where we can accelerate, I suppose, some of these small businesses and bring them either to quick success or quick failure and learn from that and carry on. So they're the, they're the kind of things we're doing. We're really putting innovation at the center of the ESB strategy. So in terms of what the, the future holds, uh, ESB has always seen energy really as an enabler, an enabler for society and for the economy. And as you can see, there are lots of changes on both the supply side and the demand side over the last number of years. So we're going to end up, we'll keep kind of solving problems and meeting customer needs, but in a lot of cases, there'll probably be needs that customers don't even know they have yet and solving the problems with technologies that don't even exist yet. But as Henry Ford said, if he'd asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. So we, we've got to kind of think a bit bigger and come up with some new technology. So and while we can't say for sure what the future holds, as uh, Peter Drucker from, from Harvard said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Thank you.